We're now going to Paul Gessler, who was inside the courtroom during the sentencing. Paul? Hi, Tim. If I could just backtrack, uh, when the judge was levying the sentence, Catherine Pugh sat rather motionless at her counsel table. She was embraced by some family afterwards. She has until April 13th to start this sentence, no later than that. Uh, now, as for the judge, Judge Deborah Chazanow, as you heard from U.S. Attorney Robert Herr, told the court that this was not a tiny mistake or a lapse of judgment, but this became, in the judge's words, a very large fraud. She also pointed to the dozens and dozens of letters that were written on Catherine Pugh's behalf to the court. Five people spoke uh, to Catherine Pugh's character, which we can get to later, but Judge Chazanel called it very ironic in part that so many people lauded her history as a public servant because that's exactly the reason the judge said that she was able to get away with the scheme and run this scheme, that she relied on her reputation as someone who helped the community and served the public. She was, uh, the judge was uh, talking about the enhancements that were present in this case, which was a violation of the public trust and acting on behalf of an edu educational institution. Catherine Pugh uh, is still in court right now, uh, meeting with her lawyers. There were two victim impact statements in this case, University of Maryland Medical System and the Maryland Auto Insurance Fund. I do want to just get to my notes here and bear with me because it's a little cold out here. Five people addressed the court uh, and they kind of span. It's, it's clear why um, uh, Stephen Silverman, Catherine Pugh's defense attorney, brought these five people up to speak to the court and address the court. They were a wide variety of people. First, her high school teacher and mentor, Dr. Argentine Craig, spoke about how Pew was a humanitarian and that she evolved. She represents the best in the community. Then it went to a Park Heights football coach, Garrick Williams, who gave the community perspective of dealing with Catherine Pugh as a legislator. As a legislator. Another uh, perspective came from a mentee in the state Senate. Senator, state Senator Carla May spoke about how Pew's character and standards were, quote, beyond reproach and her work ethic was unmatched and her courage unprecedented, according to State Senator May. From the religious perspective, Bishop Dennis Proctor from uh, the AME Zion Church and now the Northeast region gave the faith perspective and reminded the court and in a way reminded Catherine Pugh, who was seated just five or six feet from him, that she is not what she has done, that that, that, that does not define her. And finally, as you just heard from Kurt Schmoke, he gave the perspective as a colleague and he advocated, as you may have just heard from Abajoy, for a minimum incarceration and maximum community service. But to recap, 36 months in prison for Catherine Pugh. We have uh, some sound from Robert Hur that he just spoke moments ago. Holding public office is a rare privilege and an opportunity to serve the community and get things done that help our community. And unfortunately, the type of fraud and public corruption that Ms. Pugh committed and was sentenced to three years in federal prison for today undermines everyone's faith in government and what government can do for the people. Okay. And as you see behind me, there is still a throng of media here that is uh, waiting for Catherine Pugh to uh, leave the courthouse, that is waiting for um, Stephen Silverman and her defense team to come out and address um, uh, the reporters as well and the public. I, I do want to, uh, just before we send it back to you, Lynn and Tim, the, the prosecutors in this case, in their about 55-minute opening statements as they were laying out everything from their perspective as to what the judge should weigh in this case, described this as something out of a mobster movie, that Gary Brown, her associate who she pushed, pushed to be a state delegate in a seat that was vacated, was essentially her bag man, that he took cash around town and handed it out to straw donors, even took his mom into the bank to be one of those straw donors, but she had already donated to the campaign. So Catherine Pugh, prosecutors say, took that money and distributed it herself. So a lot in court today that we were not afforded because there was no trial in this case, but we, we continued to learn more even this morning. Paul, I'd like to know more about what Catherine Pugh said in court today. She did make a statement. Um, law professor yeah. Douglas Colbert told us that she seemed earnest and she was extremely emotional, that she apologized, she accepted responsibility, but that she didn't explain exactly why she did it, what was going on in her life or in her mind that made her a part of this scheme. Right, and in that 13-minute video that was submitted to the court late yesterday, this um, 
her remarks in court today kind of mirrored a lot of that. A lot of apologizing from Catherine Pugh in court today. I counted it as a 12 minutes. She gave the background of herself as a, came coming from a, a modest beginning. Her parents taught her to take responsibility, got, that God called her to serve. She worked hard and that we heard from her when she was running for mayor that that was essentially her dream job. And she reiterated that in court today. She said that while I've done some good things, they will forever be overshadowed by the wrong I've done. She took to the lectern before Judge Chazanel and gripped both ends of it as to kind of stabilize herself. She did cry at several points uh, today, but she held it together emotionally at the lectern. I think the, the most emotion she showed, Lynn and Tim, was when her high school teacher came up and was the first person to speak on her behalf. She needed to be consoled um, from her counsel, and uh, and that was the that was the most emotion we saw from Catherine Pugh today. But a 12-minute statement to the court. She said that there were days that she couldn't even raise her head out of bed or even get out of it in, uh, in the beginning of this phase where uh, many, of the, um, many of the details in this were kind of like a, a faucet that were just dripping and dripping. Every day there was more news that came out. It was even mentioned the media attention in her Ashburton community. It was even uh, brought up from Steve Silverman, the defense attorney, that there were uh, morning radio shock jocks outside very early morning with a bullhorn and they essentially told the judge look Catherine Pugh's already served a sentence in her house um, for the past year and that should be weighed into sentencing uh, Deborah Chazen Chazenow the judge in this case uh, said that deterrence was a factor in issuing 36 months as the prison term Lynn and Tim we were just watching as you were speaking some of the uh, pre-produced video that uh, Catherine Pugh released and we know it was produced with some music. Uh, she, it was very somber, uh, very uh, reflective and we also heard that the judge was not particularly moved by that video, not uh, to the point that probably Catherine Pugh would hope she was. But what was your sentiment, what was your idea of the sentiment in the courtroom during the time? We know that, uh, you know, the sentence came down, of course. Was there quiet? Was there a, a movement? Of, of, yeah. of just uh, anticipation when that sentence was handed down? Yeah, I was, I was seated behind some of her uh, colleagues, um, some, of, uh, some friends of hers who I could hear um, with anticipation as Judge Chazanow was reading off some of the uh, implications in the case, some of the, some of the stuff she was, she was weighing and considering, they, um, I think I overheard a comment that she's about to drop the hammer, that they were anticipating something large to come from the judge here. Um, there was a buildup in the courtroom today. Uh, the, we were in the biggest courtroom uh, here at the federal courthouse downtown where it's kind of stadium seating. I think it's about 140, 150 seats, and all of them were filled at the start, and there weren't many people that left some even some workers here um, some clerks and some people from other courtrooms came in to kind of witness uh, knowing that um, the the nature of, uh, of this case came in to witness it but it was uh, very quiet in the courtroom only five people of uh, as I mentioned actually spoke to the judge from a wide variety of backgrounds and um, Catherine Pugh's defense counsel came up and said we could have had hundreds of people come here and that was the only moment where one man raised his hand and said I'm not a supporter uh, indicating that not everyone in the courtroom was there to support Catherine Pugh there was uh, a, a vocal minority in the court who said that they did not come to support Catherine Pugh but there were a lot of supporters in there from family friends former colleagues um, who wanted to uh, to be a physical presence in the courtroom courtroom even if their voice could not be heard uh, before the court today Catherine Pugh's attorneys asked for about one year. Uh, prosecutors pushed for mm -hmm. almost five years. The judge gave her three years. But U.S. Attorney Robert Hur said this is not a light sentence in any way. He has enormous respect for the judge. He is confident that she considered everything. And he says three years in prison is still a very strong message to all public officials who are thinking about using their office for personal gain. So again, when somebody said she only got three years, he corrected them and said only is not the right right word right. because three years is still he thinks a serious punishment right right and also the reason that Catherine Pugh's attorneys were pushing for one year and one day is that anything over a year is subject to good behavior so if it had been 12 months it would have been a firm hard 
12-month sentence, but if anything over 12 months is subject to good behavior and perhaps early release. Another thing that the judge said in court today, with regard to the to the culture and what's going on in the city right now, she she said to enrich yourself from the beginning, this was wrong. Frankly, it astonish, astonishes me. We're all shocked. I've yet to hear an explanation of what makes any sense. She said that this. Uh, she continued that the disruption to the city business was drastic. Prosecutors laid out how she used city and state employees to uh, help implement this scheme, to have books on her at all times. The prosecution even played a video from 2017 of a book giveaway at an elementary school on the west side where uh, when the camera pulled out wide, you saw, saw all these bins of books at this book giveaway. And many of the books that were prominently displayed for all the cameras to see were healthy Holly books. And prosecutors mentioned that that was essentially contraband, that those were stolen books that she had already sold to one entity. They weren't distributed, so she repurposed them and, and gave them away. Um, and they, they played that in court to kind of show the court that this was always on her mind. This was always playing out uh, in the midst of city business. Judge Chazanow said the impact on the city is great and very tragic. Lynn and Tim.